Hello and welcome to this episode of Speak PR. My name is Jim James and I'm your host. This is the podcast for business owners and entrepreneurs who'd like to get the most out of the value of their business by using effective communications. Today I'm joined by Bant Breen, who's an entrepreneur himself, has actually a PhD and also is the founder and chairman of Cunary in New York City. But today he's joining us from Spain due to lockdown. And he has founded a business which helps executives to leverage their social media presence. And that's important because people following executives on social media are twice as likely to buy from that company as another company. So let's listen to what Brand has got to say about the impact of an executive's social media on the power of the brand itself. Uh, Hi, Jim. How are you? Good. Thanks very much indeed. Hola. Como estas? (laughs) <laughs> Hola, muy bien, muy bien, todo está bien. <laughs> Terrific. Well, look, thank you for joining us on this uh, on this podcast. And I'd I'd heard you speak on the Progress Shed uh, and was impressed, really, at what you're doing on LinkedIn and social marketing for busy executives. So, Ben, you've built a a, a company, uh, Canary, to help executives, and you've you've got a survey um, with the Center for Global Communications uh, between Emerson College and the Blankenna. School of Communications. And what you said here is that the digital reputations of key executives should no longer be seen as mere window dressing, quote unquote. Why is it important now, Ben? Tell me about it. Yeah, I mean, great question, Jim. And in in fact, you know, when I started the business eight years ago, I I had a very simple present, uh, a line where I would tell people, I would say, um, your online presence matters. It matters to um because it operates as essentially an instant background check for you it also matters because if you don't have it you're not aware of all of the digital opportunities these scaled opportunities that could come from anywhere now i would say as we live through um probably one of the most difficult moments that uh will 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 have in our in our lifetime uh this whole coronavirus and covid19 challenge um uh, we, we, your online presence not only is important, it, it's, it's, it's everything. Um, you know, it, it is the way people know you. It is your calling card. Um, when we did the research studies, we do this white paper every year. Our, our 2020 research study will come out in October. Um, and over the years, you know, some interesting tidbits have come out. Um, Two things that are very relevant to your question that you just asked are that um, when when an executive, when a professional shares content uh, via LinkedIn or all the other channels, um, it's eight times more likely to be engaged with than if it was shared on a brand channel. Mm -hmm. I think that that's really important to remember. Um, It's also kind of connected to a very, very obvious but very important insight, which is People like to connect with people, right? We don't, we, we don't, it's not normal for us to talk to, you know, Ford <laughs> or Chevy, you know, it's normal for us to talk to people. And so essentially that's really kind of one of the elements that I'm highlighting here. The second thing is uh, one of the statistics that came out of actually Asia was that, um, individuals that follow an executive and a brand are twice as likely to purchase from that company. And so, um, so you know, I, I'm, you know, you have an excellent LinkedIn score, uh, you know, at Canary, we would focus on not only LinkedIn, we would be looking at your whole online presence, what you look like in search, what you look like across the multitude of social platforms, business platforms, et cetera. So we're, we're you know, I, I don't want to overweight one over another, but um, uh, it, it certainly matters today. It is how we are, are doing business and it potentially really could become, uh, if, if this COVID thing continues, this is really quite a, a game changing moment for all of us, right? So this could be the new way we, we do business for forever. Yeah, I think, and, and in a way, because the, the company's almost too big, isn't it? We're all looking for someone to kind of handhold us through the organization to get what we need. Now, mm-hmm. tell us about Canary then, and how is it different to a regular agency that someone might go to, or even doing it doing it themselves? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I, you know, I come from the world of agencies and um, I, you know, when I started the business eight years ago, my last roles were running agencies in the uh, IPG family. I'd worked at WPP and Publicis before that. And um, so I'm very aware of agencies and marketing of all types. Um, and, you know, the great things about agencies is that they're, you know, they're filled with problem solvers, they're filled with creative thinkers, and they're service oriented. But as I looked forward, you know, eight years ago, I realized that um, the challenge with agencies is that they didn't scale as businesses, they didn't necessarily utilize technology as effectively as they needed to be using them. Um, and so, as I set out to build a solution that didn't exist in the agency world, which was Canary, right? Um, Canary is, as, as, uh, as you know, Jim, and, and probably I could just quickly describe is, is a technology platform and a solution that, that works for executives and professionals to optimize their online presence in search as, in, as well as in social platforms. It creates thought leadership content for them whether that be short form content or long form content. And then it grows their audience and engages with other key influences or influencers in the topics that they care about. The difference between what we do versus what an agency does is that, you know, our whole solution begins with our technology platform and ends with our technology platform. So all of the things that we do, um, we're, 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 we, we have a very kind of a product mindset. Um, it's very different than um, what happens in an agency, which is really kind of focused on you know, the number of FTEs that you put on a problem. You might have some brilliant thinkers, but it's very hard to scale agencies. So our, our whole process is very much um, uh, baked around the technology. Yeah, I, I'm running an agency myself for 25 years across multiple you know, countries, I know that the, the issue of content creation at scale and maintaining the quality uh, across all the clients is really hard. So how does it work? Does, does someone rent your platform and put their own content in? Or is it uh, an yeah, AI assisted question. content generation? I saw you've also got some nice handheld or some mobile apps for approvals of content, which is really nice. I like that. Mm -hmm. So just how does it work from a practical so point of view? Yeah, so we actually produce um, content. We actually generate more content, digital content than the New York Times at this point wow. for, for clients. <laughs> we, we're generating content across 36 different business verticals. Um, we have a team of creators that we've recruited that work within our platform. Um, they're vetted, they're experts in specific topics. Um, and they utilize our tools to generate the content. Some of that content is um, pre-structured, pre-formed using some uh, kind of ma machine learning tools that we, we apply, but it then is, is, is formed into final pieces of content through the creator network that we have. That then is sent to an internal team of editors that we have. Right. These editors review it. Once the editors give it the green light, it goes to a CSM, a customer success manager, which is assigned to the executives. And it is, it is then kind of reviewed one last time before it goes out. The technology also is monitoring whether the client makes any changes in it. So if, if you, let's say, get something and you change a sentence or a word or a word choice or a structure, the technology learns that and, and says, oh, well, Jim, Jim doesn't like the word like, so don't use that word, <laughs> you know? And so it learns, it learns your tone of voice, it learns your structure, and that then gets fed back into rules that are seen by the creators okay. uh, going yeah. forward. And that's very Does useful. Does that make sense? That does. Yeah. So it's a combination of some technology and some human intervention. Uh, but there was some machine. And, 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 you know, uh, yeah. And Jim, I mean, I, you know, I don't know if you, uh, how much of my background you know about, but, you know, I, I do have a PhD in artificial intelligence and marketing. And, um, and so, you know, my take on AI is that it, it's an incredibly beautiful, you, there, there, there are incredibly useful ways to utilize it so that it can support 
support uh, us in, in, the, in, in the jobs that we do, right? And so I think that that's really kind of what we believe in at Canary. There's never going to be just a tech solution that works or just a person solution. The, the, the best way is to bring, bring the two together. That's interesting because there are some solutions now that I'm seeing out there that really are creating content from, for example, a, a key sentence and are then creating yeah. four or five, you know, sort of new sentences and bodies of content around that origination uh, sentence. Mm -hmm. And on the one hand, it's yep. very exciting, but on the other hand, you can also see how that can really go very wrong uh, too. Yeah, I mean, we, um, we have a, we, we look at all of those products. Um, OpenAI uh, company in the West Coast is doing a lot of the leading work in that space. Yeah, so there may be a danger of just creating so much volume that there's little value. Then we'll get into more than the need for filtering. So do you create, if you're working across, say, Twitter, Pinterest, Insta, and all these other platforms, are you consolidating this into a dashboard in some way for either the agency or the executive? Because accountability is also a really big part of this game, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, and I mean, I probably have a couple of things to say. I mean, uh, so our interaction with our clients is that the Canary has a mobile application and that mobile app uh, operates as a, a place where uh, a client will receive notifications on various optimizations. They'll also receive their content there. They'll also receive notifications saying, hey, here's a Here's a post by an influencer in your space. You should engage. Here are some potential ways you could engage with that. So it operates as kind of like your media hub, your media yeah. agent. And oh, there, is, there are some basic metrics there. There's kind of a dashboard there in the app. Um, but uh, on a monthly basis, the, uh, customers, the, the Canary Customer uh, Success Manager sends over a measurement uh, report and uh, walks through that with the client and that will look at um, that will look at a lot of things that we think are important which is um, are you findable are you connecting with the topics that you are you connected with the topics that matter to you as a business executive mm -hmm. are you connecting with the influencers in your 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 particular field are you growing your audience are people engaging with you right so yep. we track all of those metrics and we share that with our clients on a monthly basis. And then, and then Ben, are you giving sort of prescriptions as well in terms of, are you saying, okay, now we've got, for example, this many followers. Um, here are some groups within Facebook or LinkedIn or otherwise that you could be participating in because that's the other way yes. is to go into new networks. And uh, Russell Brunson talks about, you know, going to the places where, your potential customers are rather than waiting for them, you know, to come to you. How are you handling that? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, the solution when we're kind of growing and engaging on your behalf, we certainly are applying a variety of tactics to do that. Some of those things may be some of the things that you're mentioning there. Um, the ongoing kind of interaction uh, when you get the, when the client receives a report, uh, offers that opportunity to discuss what types of additional moves that, that would be recommended by our team. So we have a kind of a growth and engagement technology platform baked into our technology, but we have also a team of experts and they support that process of providing like, Hey, you should be, we should, we would like to consider X, Y, or Z for you. Are you interested? Um, you know, interestingly enough, Jim, you know, not only am I the founder of the company, but I'm also, I'm also a user of, of Canary. And, um, and one, yeah. And so I have my own CSM and, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, I, I, a piece of advice I got recently was, um, she said to me, uh, in my monthly review, she said, post less. <laughs> and I, you know, and I think that for me, who is, you know, I'm, I'm probably one of these hyper social people. I want to be posting all the time, but uh, they took me through the math of kind of like the diminishing margin of returns. Uh, so, you know, there, there, it, it's, it, it's, this is not about trying to post a million times a day on every channel. 
right? Everybody has has their own kind of optimal number, basically. Well, that'll be that'll be useful to get to, um, and I'm looking forward to reviewing my own canary score with Michael Lee next week. Now, in terms of from a practical point, Ben, um, who's using the platform, and, and let's talk about what it costs. Is it something that's like much more than an agency or cheaper than an agency? We've got a, a couple of minutes left. Yeah, Just tell us um, about yeah, okay. the business model. Le- Leo, I'll, I'll, I'll hustle through that. So our clients um, are um, of a wide mix. Uh, we work with now about 600 different enterprises um, and, and thousands of individuals. Um, the enterprises that we work with could be as big as Fortune 100 companies. Um, I, I don't want to name names um, of the companies we work with, but we do work with some of the largest companies in the world. And we'll work with them uh, across kind of their uh, experts in specific areas, kind of their brand ambassadors on various topics or their analysts or their sales teams or their marketing teams. It really varies uh, depending on the, on the company. But we also work with small companies, uh, early stage businesses, where the senior executives, the founders are truly the flag carriers of their businesses. And so their online presence is extremely important because it is the business. Um, In terms of how much it costs, we have simplified our pricing. It's a a monthly subscription model. It's $950 a month. Um, and you get all of the things that we're talking about. You're getting uh, short form content for all various different business channels, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook business, uh, longer form pieces like blogs written for you for medium, as well as other business channels. Uh, you're getting growth and engagement baked into that. You're getting access, access to the technology and then you're getting the optimization of all of your social platforms. And uh, that could be, you know, many, many, many different platforms. So, um, and that, um, yeah, so that, that is, it, it, it's just a kind of one standard fee and it covers all of those things because we've realized that when people do one of those things, but not the other, it doesn't work. So we really believe that it has to be this holistic solution. In terms of pricing comparison to agencies, um, you know, agencies charge for what we do quite a bit of money. Um, uh, I, I, you know, I, Jim, you may know that. I mean, large agencies that we worked with have charged as much as forty thousand dollars a month uh, for what we do. The most common contract is a six-month subs- uh, uh, contract with, with an automatic uh, renewal. So that's the general contract. Um, We do have clients that uh, sign up for annual contracts, um, but I would say the the fastest, the the one that sells the most is the six month with the automatic renewal. And and we're very confident with that. You know, we have very high retention rates with our clients. Um, This is probably where my agency world background comes into play. You know, we do want to make sure that clients are happy and that they're getting, uh, they're growing and they're succeeding. And so we make sure that that happens. Ben. Canary, where can people find out about you and the business? Go to our website, uh, canary.com. That's uh, canary with, uh, I'm, I'm, it's probably better to spell it out, www.qnary.com. Uh, and you'll see everything there. And in fact, actually on the website, you can sign up for an online, an online analysis of your online presence. Um, and uh, one of our analysts will, will call you and take you through uh, what they would recommend that you should do. And so it's, it's, a, it's actually quite a useful process. Um, and it's a nice way to start the, start the in- engagement. Ben, thank you so much for joining us. Ben Breen, the founder and chairman of, Q- of I keep saying Cunary, sorry, Canary. That's uh, fine. That, you know, that's fine, Jim. Jim. <laughs> One thing that you learn with it, with when you have a company, you know, I don't call it Qnari. Qnari sounds very technologically advanced. So we'll go with that as well. It's my Italian, <laughs> Qnari, because you're in Barcelona. We're going to say Qnari tonight. Uh, so with that, exactly. I'd like to <laughs> thanks Ben for joining us uh, on the mic today, and uh, I'll obviously include these informations in the show notes. And in the meantime, we wish everybody the the best of health a profitable business and that you keep on communicating, especially on social media.